And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome John Lee, Chief Data Officer of NBC Universal Media. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, John, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. John, first of all, tell us a bit about your role at NBCU. You've been with the organization for around six months, I believe. What are you looking after? What, what is the data strategy you've been working on? Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I started about six months ago, as, as you mentioned, and um, the role really, the official title is Enterprise Chief Data Officer. And what it really means is across all of the different businesses um, and the various teams that deliver the consumer experience um, to NBCU's customers and to their viewers and for the ad sales team, right, that, that increasingly is looking to uh, monetized uh, audiences, right, um, through advanced television and, and CTV. Um, my team, in simple words, are the ones who help bring the data together, create that single view of the of the consumer, and operationalize the data so that we can deliver a more relevant and you know personalized consumer experience. Whether that's in person at the parks, whether that deals with what programming. Um, one might see recommended to, you know, uh, through streaming, what, uh, even what content gets produced all the way to, you know, more of the, uh, what you might expect, which is to provide, provide tools and to provide the raw data that helps, um, the marketers within those business units, um, do a better job of targeting, tracking, optimizing their media and their, and their website experiences and their apps. Um, and then working very closely with the ad platforms team and the measurement teams and so forth um, within Linda Yaccarino's um, advertising partnerships team, um, we call it the one platform, which is sort of the broader sort of supply side uh, platform that we use to deliver our, our um, product to our, our advertisers. Um, we're sort of the data ingredient um, within that. So that's my sort of plain, plain speak, uh, you know, answer to that, that question. So it's sort of a very big, complex world there, and uh, we try to keep it pretty simple. So you mentioned complexity, and obviously NBCU has an amazing set of assets. You've got theme parks and ticketing websites and streaming services and channels. Is it one data strategy or many? Yeah, I think it's many um, business strategies, right, that the data plays a role in from, again, the movie studios to the parks to the, the golf now business and just a very diverse portfolio of business, far more diverse than I realized initially. Um, it's one data strategy at sort of the meta level, if you will. I don't mean to crib off of your previous uh, interview, but at, at, at a meta level, which is, look, we need to consolidate um, in a privacy first, transparent way, our sort of understanding of who that consumer is across all of those businesses and where those business leaders want to do so, and where Jeff Shell, our CEO, wants to be able to create a singular experience um, for that consumer that is data-driven. So in a sense, right, sitting above all of that um, is one singular data strategy. And are there synergies between, say, the data that you collect through the theme parks or via mm -hmm. a go with, say, the data that Linda's team want to use to support your ad sales? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a great, it's the right sort of thought, thought process. And it's a symbiotic relationship um, or a cooperative relationship in the sense that um, what we are doing is creating utilities that add value to each of those business units um, and their data-driven uh, business priorities, Fandango, the parks, um, the movie business, et cetera. Um, but the sum total of all of that data being consolidated, our advertisers um, are absolutely interested in gaining more insights on their consumers. That sort of first party data at scale like that is so scarce, right? Um, that it, it absolutely enriches um, our value proposition um, from a data perspective. The way I put it to people, um, the, the good folks at Facebook and Instagram and so forth have done the best job of anyone at knowing what people like, right, and what they follow, and, and using that as an incredible asset for advertising. Amazon has done the same thing in the e-commerce and, and retail um, space, and, and we seek to do the same in the world of media, news, entertainment, right, that, that sort of thing. So that's, that's really the goal, and um, we think it's a powerful 
value proposition done well um, for our advertisers. So let's jump into the really big news story of today, which is the really exciting announcement about the launch of NBC Unified. What is it and what does it do? Yeah, simply put, um, it is a consolidated platform um, that starts with identity, right? So um, we have across all of those businesses massive reach where we have a huge number of people who do e-commerce transactions with us, who log into our streaming services, um, who subscribe to our email newsletters and subscriptions, and we have billions and billions of touches, if you will, right, to all these sites. Um, we've, with NBC Unified, we're launching the um, sort of revamp of the NBC UID, um, which will have about 150 million individual person level IDs and about 80 million households associated, obviously, to those, to those individuals um, that is first party data based, right? So we're not relying on cookies and sort of third party device, you know, signals and so forth. Um, and we're making that sort of open right, to our advertisers and to our partners to use um, interoperably. So that's, that's piece number one. Second big piece is data itself. So I separate data from identity. Um, so that was the ID that from a data perspective, we are through that ID aggregating um, a huge amount of data on who is consuming what, what their preferences are in terms of buying movie tickets, streaming content, watching TV, browsing websites, et cetera, et cetera, and turning that into a, not to use technical terms, a data taxonomy, a catalog, right, of attributes that we know about John Watts and all of our wonderful consumers, and we're productizing that, right? We're making that available for targeting, for insights, and ultimately even for measurement uh, purposes. And then the last piece is the interoperability piece itself. We call it our partner marketplace. And really that just means our ability to sync and, and sort of trade um, our IDs and our data to the activation and to the tech sort of outlets um, that our clients like. So think of that as the SSPs, the DSPs, the MarTech, um, et cetera, that, um, that, that we need to, to use to make that data valuable, right? So those are the three legs of the, of the stool. And, you know, obviously our job is never done and the, the platform will just be in sort of the 1.0 instantiation. But that is going to be live here. You know, we're, we're saying publicly um, uh, Q2. Um, we're really going to bring that live in Q1. I'm here so very imminently. And um, that we think is going to be a massive sort of boost to, again, how our internal marketers um, use data and addressability to drive personalization and to drive um, marketing performance, but absolutely on the advertising side, right, to our advertisers. We're going to allow them to tap into that data through multiple different uh, portals, if you will. Um, the clean room being sort of the primary method because due to privacy concerns, due to sort of the nature of first party data, um, we believe that's the wave of the future. So it's, it's a really state of the art set of capabilities you've built out. And I'm guessing it's been a lot of work and investment with some great technologists and data scientists and business leaders. Do you think every TV media owner needs a similar capability? Or should the industry have one platform that works across all of the different TV media companies in the States, which is probably unlikely, um, but. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, John, it's a definite yes on number one, right? And so I'm just putting my industry hat on, not my NBCU hat on, which is the, the world as it's evolving from a, you know, what Apple and Google are, are doing from a technology perspective and pri privacy regulation, everyone's going to need to develop their own ID space. It's going to need to be, they're, they're going to need to do their own flavor of what we just discussed, right? Um, and so whether that's my peers and cohorts over at, um, you know, you can fill in the blank, Disney and Warner and everyone's, you know, CBS, Viacom and, and beyond. I think everybody is working on this anyway, whether I, I believe it's the case or not. Um, and, they, and they have to, right? It's going to be the only way to transact. The, the answer to the question on like an industry standard, I think the answer is unclear slash it's complicated, right? Meaning I, I, I think efforts that are very, very focused like OpenAP, I'll be sort of very open on that um, within the linear and then evolving into the connected TV space 
um, I, I think are initiatives that are very, very focused and I think can get legs and will, right? Um, but I think the history is sort of littered with, you know what I mean, the sort of carcasses of these industry initiatives trying to form these industry standard IDs. I think the future is really, John, first party rich data owners working in a peer to peer sort of networking manner, like making their data interoperable um, through privacy safe means like the clean, to be sort of simple. And I think you, to me, you've summarized it perfectly there. This is about um, interoperability and connectivity. It's not necessarily about consolidation on a single platform. Yeah, I think that's going to be um, very, very hard. And this, this is obviously just me personally. The, 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 the aims to resurrect what the programmatic ecosystem, for example, was, right? Using these, using a third party cookie, um, for example, or third party device ID um, as these sort of t universal tokens, was sort of the easy button. Um, you know, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I, I think that the efforts to sort of resurrect that. Um, our efforts to kind of hold on to the past, efforts to move forward in a way that we just discussed, which is sort of peer-to-peer -peer networking, first-party data, privacy first. Um, that's sort of the new world order, in, in my view. So your colleagues in the TV business are storytellers, and they want to understand their viewers. Are you learning new things about your audiences from the data platforms that you're building? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very early days, um, number one, so I, I'd love to come back and talk to you again six months, you know, a year from now and, and, and report our, our progress. But yeah, yeah, John, I mean, like the, the, the things that we are learning in the sort of simple exploration of who really is, for example, the NBCU consumer, are they who we really thought they were, who really um, sort of buys into and touches us in a lot of different ways across uh, our different properties, whether it's streaming, kind of traditional TV, movies, et cetera, um, all of these things are starting to, to come to life. And then when you start to drill down and use the microscope to drill down into the segments, you start to see all kinds of interesting counterintuitive things, right? Um, about um, consumption and the, the sort of archetype of the MSNBC or, or sort of the sort of high end, you know, business news, for example, um, you know, consumer. And the other kinds of entertainment programming and the sorts of things um, that they they enjoy um, are really kind of incredibly interesting and in many cases um, counterintuitive to these stereotypes right that we would have or things that maybe even panel based research um, would suggest. So we're just scratching the surface, but but tons to be learned. And what we're finding is that our brands and our agency partners are um, finding these insights to be incredibly useful. It's really interesting. So. I guess one of the other big changes for an organization like NBCU, as you look at these amazing customer relationships you have and the data that relates or is driven from those relationships, is that privacy has become, I'm guessing, much more front and central. You mentioned it earlier. How yeah. do you turn an organization like NBCU into a privacy compliant media owner? Yeah, I mean, it's such a complex um, topic, but, you know, I would say there's sort of the foundational elements, right? Number one, of operationally and technically being able to manage all of your data centrally, right? Sort of have one set of processes and teams um, that manage it. When it's the wild west of data living in all of these silos all over the place, the anxiety over whether mistakes are being made is I think tremendous. So bringing all that data together, I think the, the next sort of more subtle thing, you know, here is, is developing an enterprise level, not just privacy policy and sort of compliance program, but um, sort of belief system, if you will, right? Um, because these things are not, once you dig under the covers, it's not black and white. Yes, uh, legal compliance, I'm not even sure if that is 100%, you know, black and white at times, but um, sort of what is sort of right and wrong, um, what is sort of ethical, um, needs to be centralized. And in my view, and so we're working on right now, needs to be a framework based on common sense, right? Rather than these big pendulum swings, right? It was sort of the wild west of like consumer privacy is not really being focused on to this pendulum swing towards where any collection of data is an invasion of privacy, right? And that sort of um, is, and it's nefarious by these sort of big corporate giants. And of course the answer, right, is, is in that sort of balance point in between. And, um, you know, we're, we're working on that right now. Right, in terms of evolving our, our stance on that.
And this is as much about culture as about workflow and business rules, it seems to me. Um, John, a final question, um, as we're running terribly short of time, but we could go on for hours, I think, on this fascinating topic. Give us a sense of the future. So the TV data ecosystem is evolving very rapidly around us, and you and your efforts are right at the forefront of lots of those changes. How do you see this ecosystem developing over the next couple of years? Give us a sense of what 2025 looks like in terms of how data is going to be used by big TV companies. Yeah, John, I, I think that, you know, a, a common sense answer to that is number one, evolution is really slow. So I don't want to give you some, you know, Star Wars, you know, futuristic, you know, sort of view of that. I, I think how we could expect it to evolve over the next couple of years is that in many ways, um, TV becomes far more addressable, right? More of that spend will happen through the, the connected TV and sort of the digital um, sort of sort of end of things. And with that, right, um, a household level at a minimum um, standard or um, sort of granularity standard around how we um, build insights, how we target and activate and how we measure on um, that will cut across. Linear won't be gone anytime soon. Right. We all understand that. Um, but that will tie together how we buy linear connected television, what I'll call sort of uh, programmatic digital, let's just call it um, within this you know, digital video um, will all be united by a new um, identity standard. Right. Um, I think that's a realistic um, objective. And while that might sound to the, the folks who are natively digital, um, who are, are in the audience here, um, in the world of television, that's that's a big leap um, here from what I'm seeing. So uh, that's what we're heads down focused on. And we hope it's not just NBCU, um, we're, we're speaking on behalf of the industry. Um, we would love for all of our peers um, to, to be sort of chasing the same objectives. And I think for the most part, um, collectively we are. Well, John, I applaud your efforts as I'm sure the audience does as well. And thank you so much for your efforts to um, lead the industry forward into this exciting new TV data ecosystem. And thank you for sharing your thoughts and insights with us. Hugely appreciated, sir. Sure thing, John. Wish we could have done it in person um, in Vegas, but I uh, appreciate the opportunity nonetheless. I'll look forward to it. Later this year, perhaps. Take care, Thanks. sir. Thanks, John. Take care. Thanks, everybody.